Hello! So I still get quite a lot of people asking me about my equipment and my studio and my general rig. So I figured I'd do a fresh rig rundown video. I did one quite a while ago, but it's generally quite stale and bland and boring because I am I just can't talk to a camera very well. Like, this is my rig and stuff, things. Mm. But now I'm a lot more comfortable with it because of you lovely people. So that's good. So I figured I'd do a fresh one uh, and maybe go into a bit more detail about uh, my guitars and about my setup and things like that for those who are interested. So here we go. First up, my recording rig. So I have my Mac with Pro Tools 10, uh, which is um, my, my DAW of choice. Uh, I've always used it. I started off just, I think it was Pro Tools 5 maybe when I first got it and a little M-Box uh, and I started using that and I've got a squeaky chair so that's good and then we have my Laney IRT Studio Amp that's pretty much all I use when I'm doing all my covers it's just straight into the amp straight out of the amp into Pro Tools and that's it I'm not really one for lots of effects and bells and whistles and posh things and blah, 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 and all that stuff. I like just a good, solid, direct guitar sound. And the Laney provides just beautiful tones in any circumstance, any style of music, any genre. This beast can just do. And then for my interface, I have a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 on the bottom, uh, and the Octopre, which is just an extra set of eight inputs for recording drums and whatnot. So yeah, that's what I use for recordage. Uh, and then it goes in there and up in there and then down to my little mixer. I have uh, various inputs on this when we have web band practices and things in here. So I've got uh, four channels for those things. Uh, and then I have my output from my recording rig going in there. And they go in there and then coming out these speakers. So these speakers are Proel Icon 8. So these are relatively new and Pretty cheap, actually, but they sound awesome. Before, I was mixing just on these little ones, which are Yamaha MSP3s, which again are incredibly good speakers. They're just quite small and they didn't have a big oomphy bass sound, so I got the uh, Proels instead, uh, and they are excellent, proving to be wonderful speakers. So there you go, that's my recording setup. Down here I have my regular PC, which I use for editing my videos and just general computer stuff, which is linked to this monitor here. And then my two old Yamaha speakers are either side of that, so I can flip between there and there at my will and change the sound as to where it comes out and pan it and things like that. When I'm working out songs, I tend to use these two speakers because they are very, very crisp and clear and because they're quite far apart, quite widely spaced, you can get quite a good stereo pan so you can hear things very well. Top tip. So that's my recording setup and my computers and things, so let's move on to guitars. And let's start over here. This is, I'm gonna move it into the light so you can see it more. Yep. There we go, this is my Court KX Custom. This is the top of the range of the Court KX guitars. There's a KX-1, a KX-1Q, a KX-5, and various others. Uh, the Custom is the top model. This is actually the older version of uh, the KX Custom. The newer ones come from uh, the new factory. There was a whole weird thing with Court, and they moved factory somewhere else. And the newer version of that guitar just isn't as good. So I don't recommend buying a KX Custom if it's the newer version from the past, I think it's five years, six years maybe, ago. Uh, but if you can find an old one, they are incredible. So this comes complete with Seymour Duncan pickups. I'm not sure what models they are, um, but they sound great. And they're coil tapped. Beep. Beep. Um, yeah, so that is my Court KX Custom. Next up we have my four string bass, which is a Yamaha BB424. Not the top of the range, not the cheap one, middle of the range because I don't play a lot of bass, but when I do, I like something sweet sounding. And that's what this Yamaha provides me. So, Yamaha BB424, excellent bass guitar, affordable, um, and uh, yeah, it does a good job. Next up we have my Court G100HH. Now this, you will have seen in almost all of my videos. This has, for some reason, become my absolute go-to guitar for sort of anything really. 
it's just it's just so good now this is a limited edition guitar so they only made uh, I don't know a few and I managed to get my hands on two of them because I love them so much uh, so they don't make them anymore so they are very hard to find uh, but they are very cheap this one was like a hundred pounds very cheap guitars but in putting some new pickups we have Seymour Duncan's uh, I think I put in a 59 neck and a JB bridge they're just fantastic they are the lightest guitars in the world I don't know what what it is but you can just they just weigh nothing at all excellent excellent things the necks on them are beautiful I think they had like just a load of really nice sort of flame maple necks left and then just thought we'll just chuck it on a cheap crap body because uh, you can just kind of push your fingernail into it and it leaves a nice big dent like that one did so there's uh, yeah lots of lots of holes in that guitar already which is nice isn't it so uh, yes I love my love 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 my G100 um, if you can find one get one because they're just so good put new pickups in it I put new machine heads on it um, replace the pots the volume and the tone part the switch is alright um, but yeah the stuff that's in it isn't very good but the guitar itself the neck is just beautiful same with this one here, we'll skip to this one. This is exactly the same guitar, but in black. And I had a white scratch plate made for it. Exactly the same pickups. Uh, and um, yes, same deal. Wonderful guitar, just um, cheap, <laughs> but very, very good. So that's those two, those two are the same. Next up, we have my Ibanez RG7421, I think. The one with the tram on anyway, which I've blocked off by the way. I hate trams. So, <sighs> good way of blocking a tram off, in case you want to know. Oh, you can't see on this one. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> uh, it's a packet of cards. A pack of cards, because you can take one card at a time and just insert them down, and they create just a good barrier so that the tram doesn't move. So if you get annoyed with the tram, and it's going out of tune a lot, and things like that, just block it off. So I love this guitar. This was a very dark purple with a big damn I'm good sticker on it, which you'll probably see if you look back in some of my older videos I've used it. I think I used it for like my old Idler covers. So if you look at those, you'll see this guitar. Before I got it re-sprayed white. So now it looks uh, like a Moomin. Next up, ah, my baby, my beautiful baby. This is my Ibanez <laughs> RGD. I mean, just, just look. Just look how, just, just, ah, oh, just look. <laughs> this thing is exceptionally good. It's going back on there. So we actually got that, uh, my grandmother died uh, and she left me some money and uh, she wanted me to buy a guitar with that money. So that's what I bought and it is a beautiful machine. Next up is my gem. Oh yeah. This is my pride and joy. When I first got into guitar, it was, all Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, and Eric Johnson, and Vinnie Moore, and Paul Gilbert, and Steve Morse, and all of these sorts of people, Yingwei Malmsteen, uh, who I was just massively obsessed with. They were my idols, and Steve Vai was just, just top of the bunch. Uh, and my absolute dream was to own one of those guitars. And when I was 18, I finally got one. So it is just an absolutely beautiful machine and it looks gorgeous and it plays just better than any other guitar I've ever had uh, and I blocked the tremor off so you can probably see in this one maybe there you go they're actually drumsticks which I've just cut and measured to <laughs> the right size and in there you can see lots of playing cards because you can just insert them one at a time until it's at the perfect uh, depth, width, whatever you want to call it, uh, perfect level to block it off with. Uh, so there you go, that is my gem. I've had that for a long, long time and it has been everywhere with me and it's a bit battered. It's got a nice big dink in the top there. And I was actually getting it out of my car one day and the case was open and it fell out and it just smashed all of that up. But I have a pupil who actually does um, resprays and restorations and things like that. You'll see some more of those guitars in a minute. So he, uh, the wizard that he is, managed to match it pretty damn close, although over time it has faded a little bit. So 
Uh, we could probably touch that up at some point. So that's my gem. I love that beast. Mm. Next up, here we have my eight string. So this originally started life as a Dean um, something. I actually have no idea what model it is or was. Uh, but it has since become the Ainsley guitar. Now me, along with a buddy of mine, uh, created a project called Ainsley, which was almost entirely written on Guitar Pro, and then emailed back and forth, and then recorded mostly by me. Um, and this became the Ainsley guitar, and that was our logo. If you know who Ainsley Harriet is, then you'll understand. So that's my eight string. Uh, again, not a very expensive guitar. We're talking 300, 350 pounds, relatively cheap, affordable. But I had the frets dressed on it, and I fully set it up, and I have two Seymour Duncan Nazgul 8 pickups in there. So that sounds like a monster. And I've currently got that tuned to... Um, some stupid tuning. Uh, I'm working out a Loathe song at the minute. If you haven't heard Loathe, check them out. Incredible band. So I'm working out that, and that's in a very silly tuning. I've got a 95 gauge string on the bottom there, and you can see it vibrating now. That's good. I like that. So that's my eight string. Uh, that's my other chord. This is my little ukulele. Uh, this is a Lanny LC55. Uh, little concert ukulele. I rarely play it, but I've had some ukulele pupils. Um, I haven't got any at the minute, but I've had them in the past, and I've taught them that. So that's my ukulele. Next up, I'm going to come round here for this, round the kit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we are. Now this monstrosity <laughs> um, was a Washburn, I think. Um, not sure what series, Lion something. Um, which was bright red and I picked it up for very, very cheap, like £20 or something. I think someone brought it in second hand to uh, my dad's shop and I just bought it off them straight away. Uh, it's actually quite a decent guitar, um, but I made myself a project and I got myself a little black pen and a little yellow pen and just doodled stuff all over it and ended up with this. I think I was doing it on and off for almost a year in the end, um, but yeah, I ended up with uh, the Mikey Custom. So there you go. That's an old crap guitar that just looks quite cool. I'm quite proud of that. Next up, the Cheddar Caster. Now this is an old Yamaha ERG, I believe it was. Um, the story behind this one, it was just black, and then I decided to get creative and I drilled lots of little holes in it. So I dismantled it, did that, and then put the body on my garage wall, and it stayed on there for about 12 years, and I did nothing else. And then last year, I finally found the body again and found a box with the rest of the bits in, which is mental because I had no idea I had that at all. And then handed it over to my pupil, who is the painting wizard and whatnot. And yes, he created the Cheddar Caster. So that's that one. Next up, the Flubber Caster. <laughs> I like these names. Everything is something caster. Oh, I'm going to move around here. So this is actually an old Yamaha Pacifica uh, 112, I think. This was one of my first guitars, uh, and it was white. I've used it in a few videos. Uh, and again, it's had various things done to it. I've drawn stuff all over it. I had little googly eyes up here at one point. If you watch any of mine and Jake's old um, Magic Beans, old Slipknot cover videos, I use that guitar quite a lot. And it's got eyes and hair and the face and stuff. So that's that one. Uh, recently, again, done it up, had it sprayed, put in a, I think it's a Dimasio Path Pro. Not sure what model it was, but I got the pickup. And now that's in a very low tuning, not quite baritone, but very low, very thick guitar strings on there. Um, and it's very hot in here, sorry, I'm sweating quite a lot. This can't be attractive. Yeah, so there you go, that's that one. And then finally, of the electric guitars, we have the Eloise guitar. This is another Yamaha ERG, same as the cheese guitar, the Cheddar Caster. 
Um, which, again, very cheap guitar, not great. It was just lying around, I never played it. So I decided to do something with it. And I painted it blue, and I gave my daughter some pens to draw stuff on. So these are all her doodles. She's three. So she can get away with these things. Uh, and there we go. So she drew all these things on it, and then she scribbled on the back of it. So that is, uh, yes, my Eloise guitar. And there we go, that's the last of my, oh no it's not, it's not, it's not. I have this little thing. This is uh, a Crafter Cruiser, um, less than half size guitar. It's like a, a child's guitar, I think, or a travel guitar, I'm not sure. It's just a little guitar, but it's actually quite good. So that's something that's very tiny and I can take it on holiday with me. Um, so it sometimes comes with me if I go away somewhere because it can just fit in a bag or in a suitcase. Okay, here we are. Last but not least, this is my Court A6 bass. Now I had one of these a few years ago, quite a few years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, uh, and I loved it, but then I sold it in favor of something else. I can't remember what it was. I think I just didn't play it that much. Um, and I kind of regretted it quite a lot. So fairly recently, about a year or so ago, I got myself a new one. Now this is just a, an excellent machine. It sounds so good and it looks beautiful and it plays so well and it's lovely. It's definitely my, my best bass, my favorite bass. Okay, and here we have my acoustic. This is a Court CJ7X, I believe is the model of it. Um, they don't make these anymore. Again, this is one of the old courts from the old court factory when they made fantastic guitars. A lot of the stuff now is excellent, but some of the older stuff was just mm, lovely. Again, not massively expensive. You're talking six, seven hundred pounds maybe at the time. Um, but this is the only acoustic I own. And it has been the only acoustic I've owned for um, several years, actually. It's been heavily gigged and it is semi-battered and stuff, but it's just the best thing ever. Sounds so good, feels so good, plays so good, uh, and the pickup in it is great as well. So there you go, that is my guitar collection. This video is going to be quite long, so hopefully you've made it through this. Other things in my room, let's see, let's see. My other amp. This is a little Yamaha THR10. Now this thing, if you want a small practice amp, they're about 250 pounds. So I don't know how much that converts to wherever you're from and if you can get them there, but just get one. Just get one because they're incredible. All the sounds on them are fantastic. They've got a few effects and five banks that you can save. Uh, and they have USB and they come with a full suite of um, Cubase and plugins and things. So basically, if you want to record something or get into playing and recording and stuff, if you get one of those, you have everything you need. It's a guitar amp, it's a bass amp, it's an acoustic amp, it is just a flat amp so you can put vocals through it. It's just a wonderful little piece of kit. I cannot recommend these things enough. And my drums, my drum kit is a Dixon Artisan Pro. You probably can't see that because it's quite shiny. Uh, this is the only acoustic kit I've had and probably the only acoustic kit I will have for a very long time because uh, it's a lovely drum kit. There is another Tom down there somewhere but I'm currently on the two Tom setup. Um, and some Sabian B8 cymbals, cheap cymbals. I don't play that much drums. Uh, I, do, I do play and I do teach drums but not as much as guitar. So hence, simple but very nice kit. Uh, and there we go, I believe that's about it. That is my sixth LED sign. I love sixth. Again, if you don't know sixth, buy lots of sixth. Now, there's another one up there. Just cause, just cause that one doesn't light up. They sent me that one and it broke like the day after. So I emailed them and said, it's broke. And they went, okay, we'll send you another one. No questions. So I could have lied about that. I just had two. Not quite sure why I want to, but now I've got two, but one doesn't light up. I'm rambling. I'll shut up. So yeah, so there you go. This is my studio, and that was my studio tour and my rig rundown of stuff and things. And I'll see you next time. Any questions about my stuff, leave them in the comments. 
I'm dizzy. Oh, whoop. Bye. Oh, jeez, I am dizzy. God.